students, in today's episode, we are trying to provide some information about another type of tourism that is wildlife tourism. Wildlife tourism is a type of tourism where tourists go to natural areas to watch wild animals, birds, insects, etc. Wildlife tourism encompasses a wide range of activities including watching the wild animals in their natural habitat, bird watching, whale watching, etc. It is generally the term that technically covers both flora and fauna, although in popular usage, wildlife is mostly used to refer to animals in wilderness. The term is commonly used to cover all types of animals, including all kinds of insects and marine life. Watching wild animals and other insects is essentially an observation activity, although in some cases it can involve interacting with animals like touching, washing, feeding them, etc. Sometimes wildlife watching may be undertaken by tourists who have purchased a specialized package such as bird watching holiday or any other package with specific objective of seeing certain kinds of wildlife. Equally, there are tourists who engage in wildlife watching as part of activities that focus on adventure in forest areas and for whom watching animal is an added attraction and not necessarily be their motivation. Wildlife tourism is becoming a multi-million dollar business offering customized packages and safaris. Animal can be viewed in their native environment from vehicle or on foot or even from domesticated animal. Wildlife tourism encompasses non-consumptive interactions with wildlife. It has recreational aspects of adventure travel and supports the values of ecotourism and nature conservation. So the topic can be divided into following subheadings, economic support, impact of wildlife tourism, wildlife tourism in India, popular wildlife sanctuaries or national parks of India, Sundarbans and Kaziranga national parks. Economic support. Wildlife tourism is an important part of tourism industry. In many countries, it contributes substantially to the economic development of the region. For many African and South American countries, Australia, India, Canada, Sri Lanka, Maldives, etc., wildlife tourism is a major source of employment and revenue generation. It has grown substantially in recent years worldwide. There is some confusion between ecotourism and wildlife tourism. Ecotourism is a form of tourism based on the principle of conservation of natural and cultural heritage in natural areas involving the local community and providing the economic benefit of tourism. Growth in wildlife tourism. Wildlife watching tourism has grown substantially in the last few years. This can be seen in the number of different types of wildlife watching activities in recent years. It has been linked to commercial tourism. More and more tour operators and travel agents are selling different types of wildlife packages to attract the tourists. In order to make this sustainable, wildlife friendly as well as carbon neutral packages are to be sold. Wildlife watching is a new attraction that is helping to diversify tourism and to promote community development in remote areas. For example, whale watching in 1991 was around 4 million tourists, around Sydney which increased fourfold by 2013. It was a business of over a billion of US dollar. Types of tourists. There are different types of wildlife tourists. 
The following are the common classification. First one, explorer. These are the individual tourist who takes lot of risks. They will not spend more money. Their objective is to explore some new things. Mostly, they carry all their logistics. Second one is backpackers. These are the travelers who are on limited budget. They may discontinue the journey any time without reaching the original destination. They may take off from their regular profession for two to three months and go as tourists. They have limited resources and high spending is not expected from them. Third category is Backpackers Plus. He is financially very sound and prepared to spend more money. He generally interested to learn local customs, traditions, culture, etc. He may also be prepared to stay longer. High volume. These are tourists coming in large groups who wants to enjoy natural areas in a very peaceful manner. They expect very good facilities and prepare to pay for it. They are also interested to learn local culture, traditions, customs, etc. Fifth category is general interest tourist. These are the people who are on tour on special packages for a particular purpose. They may visit a national park or a bird sanctuary. They have limited time and spend limited money. Special interest tourist. These are the tourists, mostly researchers, who are interested in a detailed study of a particular animal, bird or insect. They bring their own logistics and for social behavior pattern, prepared to stay for a long period. Moving on to the next one, impact of wildlife tourism. Wildlife tourism can cause significant disturbances to animals in their natural habitats. The growing interest in traveling to developing countries has created a boon in resort and hotel accommodation, particularly on rainforest areas. Wildlife weaving can scare animals, disrupt their feeding and nesting sites. The direct effect depends upon the scale of tourism development and the behavior of wildlife to the human presence. The following are the direct impact. Disturbing breeding pattern. The presence of tourists searching out wildlife to photograph can adversely affect their feeding pattern and breeding process. Some may even have long-term implications for behavioral and ecological relationship. For example, an increase in boat traffic has disturbed the feeding of gained otters in Manu National Park, Peru. On the shore Kariba in Zimbabwe, the number of tourist boats and the noise generated has disrupted the feeding and drinking of water patterns of elephants and the black rhinoceros. It has feared that further increase in boat traffic will affect the reproductive process also. Disturbing feeding pattern. Artificial feeding of wildlife by tourists can have severe consequences for social behavior pattern. Artificial feeding by tourists can also result in a complete loss of normal feeding behaviors. Disruption of parent offsprings bonds. Wildlife tourism also causes disruption in intraspecific relationship. Attendance by female harp seals to their pups decline when tourists were present. They spent significantly less time with their pups. A similar concern has been voiced for whale watching. Next one is wildlife tourism in India. The uniqueness of Indian subcontinent lies in the diversity it offers in every aspect. 
India blessed with the most disparate geography and climate which provide habitat to a vivid range of flora and fauna. The incredible range of wildlife in India is a nature's gift that makes India the ideal location for wildlife tourism. Protecting the birds and animals in the zoological park is a good thing but there is nothing better than serving them exactly where they are best suited. Therefore, India houses a number of wildlife sanctuaries and national parks that help in preserving the wildlife in the natural forum. The exotic range of flora and fauna in India is the reason behind the successful growth of wildlife tourism in the country. There are about 400 wildlife sanctuaries, about 100 national park in country. These natural homes accommodate an estimated 350 species of mammals, 2100 types of birds, over 300 varieties of reptiles and countless insects. A tour of the wildlife sanctuaries provides an experience that is beyond expression. Wildlife tourism including ecotourism has witnessed a massive growth in India in recent years. It has helped to conserve the biodiversity feature of the country. Now people are aware about endangered species and initiatives are being taken to save them. Wildlife tourism also supports the projects for conservation financially. It has led to the reduction in the poaching activities in the country. There is no doubt about the fact that wildlife tourism is a popular and profitable venture in India. It is extremely important to make sure that the negative impact on account of the development of wildlife tourism is kept at minimal. Only a sustainable approach can lead to success of wildlife tourism in India. Wildlife resources constitute a vital link in the survival of the human species and have been a subject of much fascination, interest and research all over the world. Today, when wildlife habitats are under severe pressure and a large number of species of wild fauna have become endangered, the effective conservation of wild animals is of great significance. India is an exciting place to be for wildlife enthusiasts and nature lovers from around the world. India is one of the 17 mega diverse countries of the world with only 2.4% of the world's land area, 16.7% of the world's human population and 18% livestock. It contributes about 8% of the known global biodiversity. India is home to world's largest wild tigers population and has got unique assemblage of globally important endangered species like Asiatic lion, Asian elephant, one horned rhinoceros, Gangetic river dolphin, snow leopard, Kashmir stag, dogong, gharel, great Indian bustard, etc. There are 103 existing national parks in India covering an area of 40,075 km square, which is 1.23% of the geographical area of the country. There are 528 existing wildlife sanctuaries in India covering an area of 3.57% of the geographical area of the country. Moving on to popular wildlife sanctuaries or national parks of India. First one is Corbett National Park. Corbett National Park is the first wildlife reserve of India. It extends over an area of more than 500 square kilometer. Corbett National Park was established in 1936 as the Haley National Park. 
in 1955 to 56 it has changed to Ram Ganga National Park and finally Jim Corbett National Park. Corbett National Park was set up in the year 1936 as India's first national park. This park spans across some 920.9 square kilometer at an altitude of 600 to 1100 meters about the foothills of the western Himalayas in the districts of Nainital and Puri Gharwal in the state of Uttarakhand. Initially, the park measured merely 323.75 square kilometers, but to accommodate wildlife animals like tigers and elephants, it was expanded to its present area of 520 square kilometers in 1966. The year 1973 was a landmark in the field of wildlife preservation. It was in this year that wildlife preservationists and naturalists from around the world launched Project Tiger. The Jim Corbett National Park has the distinction of having been chosen as the venue for the inauguration of this project. Flora Corbett National Park is rich in vegetation with different kinds of trees and shrubs. The lower reaches of the park where the land is flat compared to the upper reaches consist of tall Shoria Rabasta trees. Dalbarjia Sisu and Acacia Katachu trees are found in the middle reaches while the upper reaches of the mountains are full of buckley and chir and gauril and bamboo trees. The park is dotted with lantana shrubs, a species that is a great cause for concern. Imported years ago from America, the lantana shrub ensures that nothing else grows near it. In the park are 110 species of trees, 51 species of shrubs and over 33 species of bamboo and grass that are mostly found in meadows. Coming to fauna, Corbett National Park has more than 50 species of mammals, 585 species of birds and 25 species of reptiles, but the park is known for its elephants and leopards, not its tigers. Many kinds of deer, namely Cheetal, Sambar, Chinkra, Pada and Mundchak abound in the park. Tiger sighting is rare. Elephant herbs comprising tuskers, females and calves are commonly seen. Leopard sighting is even rarer than that of the tiger and these spotted cats confine themselves to the higher reaches of the park. Other feline species found in the park are leopard cats, jungle cats, the rare fishing cat, the caracal, to name a few. Sloth birds, wild boars, monkeys, dholes, jackals and gorals also inhabit in the park. The aquatic reptile population in the park consists of mugger and gharil, crocodiles, Indian rock pythons, russell's vipers, king cobras and common crates are some of the snakes found in the park. Bird life includes parakeets, flycatchers, babblers, cuckoos, robins, bulbuls, Indian and great billed hornbills, warblers and finches to name a few. Coming to safaris, this park is also known for elephant safari. Safari provides visitors an unusual experience as they can watch the wild animals in its natural habitat. Elephant safaris can be arranged in Thikala and Bijrani. Jeep safaris are available from outside the park as well as from Thikala. Next is Sundarbans and Kaziranga National Park. Sundarbans National Park Sundarbans National Park is located 
in the state of West Bengal. The Sundarbans are a part of the world's largest delta formed by the rivers Gangas, Brahmaputra and Meghna. Sundarban is a vast area covering 4,262 square kilometers in India alone with a larger portion in Bangladesh with 2,585 square kilometers of the Indian Sundarban forms the largest tiger reserve and national park in India. This protected forest area in West Bengal was declared a national park in 1984. The total area of the Indian part of the Sundarban forest is about 4,262 square kilometer of which 2,125 square kilometer is occupied by mangrove forest across 56 islands and the balance is underwater. The Sundarbans Wildlife Sanctuary is the world's largest estuarine sanctuary. The Sundarbans is not only a national park but also a tiger reserve, a world heritage site and a biosphere reserve. The name Sundarban has been derived from the Sundari trees that are found in abundance in the Sundarbans National Park. Sundarbans is home to Royal Bengal Tigers along with a sizable population of spotted deer, wild pigs, monkeys, kingfishers and eagles. The Sundarbans is also known for the Ridley Sea Turtles. The park is surrounded by a buffer zone of 885 square kilometers. This also mainly consists of mangrove forests. The core area of the park has its own natural boundaries with the river Matla on its west, the river Haribanga on its east, with Nethidopani and Gosba in the north. Coming to flora, the Sundarbans National Park has a wide variety of plant life too. Inside the Sundarbans, there are mangrove scrub, saltwater mixed forest, littoral forest, brackish water forest and swamp forest. The large floral population in Sundarbans includes trees like Dhundal and Assam. Kaziranga National Park was originally established as a reserve forest in 1908. It was declared a sanctuary in 1916 to counter extensive pouching of the rhinoceros. In 1974, the Indian government declared the present area as a national park. Then in 2006, it was declared a tiger reserve under the central government's project tiger scheme. The forests are spread across an area of 430 square kilometers and are home to species like tigers, rhinoceros, elephant and the Asian water buffalo, swamp deer, monitor lizard, etc. Kaziranga contains significant breeding populations of 35 mammalian species of which 15 are threatened as per the IUCN red list. Kaziranga is one of the few wild breeding areas outside Africa for multiple species of large cats such as Indian tigers and leopards. The park is the abode to more than 70% of one horned rhinoceros in the world. It also harbors more than 60% of India's wild buffalo population along with the only population of the eastern swamp deer and seven species of turtles and tortoises. The park also has a sizable population of birds. Kaziranga has been identified by BirdLife International as an important bird area. It is home to a variety of migratory birds, water birds, predators, scavengers and game birds. It is home to 25 globally threatened and 21 near threatened species of birds. Huge flocks pelicans and rose-ringed parakeets besides crested serpents eagles, grey-headed fishing eagles, 
red jingle fall, Bengal floricans and whistling teals can be seen in this park. Two of the largest snakes in the world, the reticulated python and rock python as well as the longest venomous snake in the world, the king cobra inhabit in the park. Other snakes found here include the Indian cobra, monoclid cobra, Brazil's viper and the common crate. Monitor lizard species found in the park include the Bengal monitor and the water monitor. Other reptiles include 15 species of turtle such as endemic Assam roofed turtle and one species of tortoise, the brown tortoise. 42 species of fish are found in the area including the tetrodon. Kaziranga is the most important and significant natural habitat for in-situ conservation of biological diversity including those containing threatened species of outstanding universal value from the point of view of science and nature conservation. These values and criteria made Kaziranga National Park to get inscribed on the World Heritage List of Convention concerning the protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage in the year 1985. So students, hope you people enjoyed the Ebola show. We will meet in the future episode. Till then, take care. Thank you.